Welcome to a new video from Elastic Course. In this video, I will show you how to install Docker Engine on the Windows platform and then install the PyHole ad blocker container on the Windows Docker environment. Let's get started. Now with Windows 10 newer update 2004 or above, your system will support Windows subsystem for Linux version 2, which allows Docker to run more efficiently and more natively on the Windows platform because it allows the Windows to have a full Linux kernel inside of it, so it makes the container operation more smooth and more comparable to the Linux environment. The only problem with this is that the Docker engine relies on Hyper-V in the back end to be able to run containers, and therefore if you install Hyper-V services on your Windows 10 platform, you will no longer be able to use VMware Workstation in the same time because they don't work well together. Therefore, Hyper-V services blocks VMware Workstation environment, so you have to keep that in mind. If you want to install Docker for Windows, you have to sacrifice VMware products. Now, to verify your system support the latest version, all you need to do is to go from your settings menu, and under system, there will be about section, and in the about section, you will see your version in here. You have to be version 2004 or above, if you are not, you can simply go and download the update using the Windows update. Once this is done, we just need to follow the script similar like we did with the Linux in the previous video. And we're gonna be looking into the Windows platform instruction to enable Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL2 using PowerShell. So we're gonna copy the first command which basically enables the Windows subsystem for Linux now from the bar shell, we're gonna enable the first feature. And with that completed, we can now enable the second feature, which allows us to run virtual machines in the Windows platform. Because with Windows subsystem for Linux, you won't just be able to run Docker services, but you can also download any Linux operating system from the Microsoft store, which allow you to run a virtual machine on the Windows platform and share the Linux from the Windows subsystem for Linux which makes it run more natively and more smooth as well. And that makes Windows subsystem for Linux version 2 is a good benefit for both sides. Now our second feature is enabled as well. And now we just need to restart the computer for these changes to take effect. Now once the computer comes back up, we just need to go into the PowerShell and just make the Windows subsystem for Linux default version to 2 so that we can use the newer version instead of the first version. For the first time you run this, you might get a message that says you need to update the kernel. So you just need to open this link and download the Linux kernel update package. It will just be a small install file. And once the setup for this tool has been completed, we're just gonna click finish. Now when we do the command one more time, it did accept because it showed us information about the difference between the two versions. Now we can just go to the Docker website and click get started. And this time we're gonna download the Windows installer. Now once you open the Docker installer, it will show you the Windows subsystem for Linux version two enabling. We already did that, but we can click okay. Now the Docker desktop installer has finished. Now we just need to log out one time. Now this is the Docker notification that it's running. Now, once I open the application, now we see Docker is running and this is the symbol GUI for the Docker application on Windows. And it allows you to have symbol management over your containers, unlike the Linux edition, which doesn't have a GUI, but this is very useful for new users as well, because it makes it easier to look into the containers that are built and manage them from the screen. Now, similar to what we did with the Linux, we have a Docker run command that allows us to start up a container using the pyhole as the name and uses the pyhole latest image from the docker hub. All these parameters are similar to the script we ran in the Linux environment, with just the server IP, the web password since we are not generating the password in here. We also have the DNS settings configured for the local host and the upstream going to the public internet using the Cloudflare public DNS. With the default settings, you're getting board 80 inside the container and inside your host machine. 
and also the secondary script using the custom board uses board 8080 going into board 80 inside the container and this also allows the board 53 for DNS queries now let's start first with the default setup and we're just gonna copy the script for the default boards and using the Windows PowerShell I'm gonna run this script but before I click enter I need to make sure I change my server IP to my current IP address on this machine using the IP config slash all command I'm able to find the IP address of my machine here this is 10.10.100.25 so this will be my server IP I need to make sure I change that in the parameters for starting the container so that it would come up with the correct IP address Now everything else is all set, I just need to hit enter and it's gonna download the image for the first time from the GitHub as we see it's pretty fast. Now this as you notice is gonna ask you to open the Windows firewall because we're gonna be listening on the DNS board and also the web board and therefore the Docker application will ask for your permission to open these ports on your behalf in the Windows firewall which is convenient. If you try to open the GUI, magically you now start seeing your running containers in a nice format in here and it also shows you which port is listening or at least one of them. Inside of here you can see the terminal output from the machine and you can also see nice statistics like the CPU usage or the memory usage. As you see this is nothing comparable to a normal virtual machine and this is why Docker containers are very lightweight and very fast to create. Now also from here you can get into the CLI of the Docker container directly or you can stop or restart this container or you can delete it with just one button click. Now if I try to delete this and since I already have the buy hole image downloaded locally to my machine right now and if we try to run the command docker run one more time to start up this container it will only take one second from now on to run this container because as you see it's very very fast once you have the image downloaded locally. Now we have a web service, a DNS service and the full system running in just a few seconds. This is very powerful. Now we have our system ready and we should be able to access the server using the 127.0.0.1 address or directly using our server IP which is the private IP address 10.10.100.25. So I'm going to try this. And this will show me the buy hold visitor screen with the 84,000 domains on the block list and all the queries that is still to zero because we haven't configured any client to use this system yet. Now let's log into the system from the login screen and the password will be the same password we entered when running the docker run command which is right here. Now inside our buy hold let's go into the settings and let's modify our upstream DNS Right now I see Cloudflare is set just the primary. Let's also add the secondary. And let's save our settings. Now let's also go into group management and add list. And let's also add more list to our block list to make sure we are catching as much commercials and tracking software as possible. We're gonna use the website firebug.net which has a few block list in text files in here. We can add a few suspicious lists and advertising lists so that the system will block it if they try to send a DNS query. For example, let's check this list. So as you see, any domain in this big list of bad domains gets sent to Byhole as a DNS query. The Byhole will respond with four zeros and this means the domain will never work because it's assigned a wrong IP address. And this applies to all the domains in this list. We're gonna copy the list to add it to our pi hole and we're just gonna paste the address in here and add our list. Now let's also add a few more advertising lists. Now I added five more lists just from this one website. Now for all these new lists to take effect and be added to the 84,000 plus domains that are being blocked right now using our DNS system, we're gonna have to either update the list online like we did in the previous video or you can also run the command pyhole-g 
from the CLI. So now this can be a good opportunity to see how to access the container CLI using the Docker engine application for Windows. So now from here, using our PyHole container, as you see, there is a button for CLI. This allows me to run a shell inside my container directly. So now I just need to write PyHole dash G. And once you run this, you'll see that this is running the script to update the list, including the five newer ones we just added. So now if I go back to my dashboard in here, you see the domains have increased dramatically to 118,000 plus. In this way, we are making sure we are blocking as much as we can. Now to start pointing our clients to the system as a DNS server, like we did with the previous video, we just need to go into our network connection. In this case, I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm just gonna modify whatever interface I'm using. And inside the IPv4, I can set the DNS server manually to my PyHole container now, or I can make the DHCP server that I'm using in my network, whether it's my router or my firewall, and distribute the DNS server IP 10.10.100.25 as a DNS server to my network so I don't have to manually set it up. In this case, let's try the aesthetic assignment and we're just gonna say 10.10.100.25 and we're gonna hit okay. And after the setting has been set, now the queries will start going up because now our Windows 10 client is the first Client that sent queries to the PyHole as a DNS server. So now from our command prompt, we can also test this out using the ns lockup command, which allows us to run DNS queries right from the command line. You can see in here, it's recognizing the PyHole 10.10.125 as also showing this weird host name, which is the same as the service. So now if we try to send any query right now, it should go to the system and also the number should start getting up. So now for example, let's do google.com. Now as you see, some of the queries are working and some of the queries are being blocked as well. Same with another domain. And as long as we are getting a proper response and the numbers are going up, that means the system is operating properly. And as you see, the load and the memory usage is very low when these operations are taking place. And also when you try to send a query and the DNS server pie hole is sitting between you and the public DNS and checking this query against 118,000 plus domains on the block list without taking any time. And the queries are coming up as soon as you put them. So this is perfect because it's very lightweight and it's very effective. Now add with the other option to make sure your clients are getting this IP address automatically without having to assign them as a DNS server in every client in your network. In my case, my 40 gate firewall is distributing IP addresses to my clients using DHCP. We can see in here DHCP clients is showing to two different interfaces, my wired and my wireless interface. And you can see both interfaces have clients right now with DHCP leases. So I can simply go to my first interface, for example, and under DHCP server, this is the least details that I'm given to my computers and my network, and I'm letting them know to use a specific DNS server. So in this case, I can let the system know to send the buy whole container IP address or the Windows 10 that's running the Docker engine, more specifically, the IP address 10.10.125 as a DNS server. Therefore, every time someone joins my network and gets an IP address using the firewall DHCP server, you will get this IP address as the DNS server. You can do the same also for your other interfaces and the same instruction can be followed in a different platform than FortiGate or even in a normal router that is equipped with DHCP service. You can also go inside and modify the IP address to match the DNS server IP for the PyHole. Now also to show you the other side of the story, if we try to search for a block domain in the DNS query, for example, let's see something all the way in the bottom, like this one, for example. And if we try to run the query for this using the PyHole as the DNS server, now you will see that we are getting four zeros. So this IP will never work. If we try it in a browser because everything is going back with an invalid IP address.
Now I'm going to open my Docker GUI and I'm going to delete this container for a second. And now let's run a scenario where you may be using port 80, the default HTTP port for a different web server already in your environment. And you want to use a custom port so that you can use your pihole management over the web in the same time you are using your web server already. So we're going to copy this command. This is just the Docker getting started. And as you see, it's using port 80 as well to run a web server with some getting started docs. So we're going to copy this command just to emulate the scenario. And we're just going to run the Docker run command to get the Docker getting started container. Once we hit this, it's going to also download the image for the first time. And now we have a web server already occupying port 80. So now if we try to open our server IP again, now this is running for me the help pages for the Docker application. So now we can go back to our script and now we can use the custom board script, which goes around the board conflict by using a custom board 8080. We're just going to copy this Docker run command and we're going to go back to our PowerShell and we're going to paste it. And if you're already using board 8080 for something else, you can change it to whatever you want. Let's change it to 8888. Now let's hit enter. And now the server came out in one second again. So now in the browser, it all depends on which port we use. If we use the default port, this will show me the Docker container for the help pages. But if we do a custom port using the 8888 port, this will show me the pihole container as the DNS server web management page. Finally, if you also want to use the CLI, but you don't want to use the GUI, you can simply put the command docker execute and then we're going to need to use a flag dash it for interactive terminal and then you can simply list your container name in this case our container name is pihole we're going to say pihole and then we have to list the environment we are trying to terminal into so in this case this is a bash environment and once we put this now you are inside the docker container you can see here the host name and I'm root user right now at the pihole container. So if we were to try to update our list, for example, we would say pihole-g. And this way we are interacting over a terminal channel directly to our pihole container without using the CLI button, just using the docker execute-it container name and then environment name. And that's how you create containers on Windows environment using Docker engine and how to create containers using custom board or how to access the CLI on a Docker container. Thank you for watching.